So this is the story all about how I lost $50,000 in the stock market. Now, this is not exactly an April Fool's joke, but it's also not what it seems. So let me explain. Throughout the course of my career in the stock market, we'll say, uh, through my time investing since 2017 January, I've made a lot of great moves and also a lot of pretty stupid mistakes. Let's just say that plain and simple. So in this video, I thought in the spirit of April Fool's Day, I will show you guys how I made myself look like a complete fool. I'm sure all of you guys can resonate with this as well. There have been stocks or options or, or whatever you invest in that didn't work the way you thought it would. So this is gonna be fun. Make sure to like the video and share in the comments down below what mistakes you guys have made. Um, and we'll talk about, you know, what are really mistakes and uh, missed opportunities. I think in the end, kind of a little bit of a different thing here. So the first big mistake in the stock market that I've experienced is pretty recent, this year actually, and I lost $30,000 in a stock known as Futu, okay? Now, I like to think of myself as one of the early adopters of Futu, one of the first people that really put out videos on Futu, and this is a stock that I bought around $30 per share, and I knew this was a super undervalued stock. This is a Chinese uh, stock brokerage company. It has a lot of users over the past year. Their user base has grown triple digits. Their revenue has grown over 200%. Their net income, I don't know, the latest number was like 20 something times the previous year. So that's what, a, a, like a 2000% increase or something like that. Crazy, crazy. Right, and one of the few stocks that's actually out there as a brokerage company. You know, Robinhood is not even on the stock market yet, but Futu is. And they have such tremendous growth and they've been killing it quarter after quarter. Their PE ratios were, were, were super low. Everything was so low about this company. It was like an absolute home run. And what happened was it did turn out to be a home run. I um, sold the first time at around 50% gain and then it dropped back down towards the 30s once again and I bought back shares. So at one point the most I had in this company was 300 shares which at the time was around you know a $10,000, $11,000 investment and lo and behold um, after another 100% gain I sold out of this position around 60s or 70s. I'll have the screenshot here of my final batch of shares and guess what? This stock went even crazier to 100, okay? And then at 100, I thought, all right, I already you know, lost out on uh, almost another 100%, yeah. And <laughs> so I thought, there's no way this, this stock can go up 200, 300% in a row. Um, it's gonna go down, even though I think it's undervalued. I think it's not gonna last. There has to be some pullback, right? Oh my God. This thing just went on an absolute monster rally once again. And in the end, ultimately, this hit around $200 per share. And I bought the stock at 30 in September. Um, and it was even in the 30s as recent as I think it was December, right? So ultimately, I could have, you know, taken that 300 shares times 100 points, maybe uh, I could have sold it at, at 150 per share, 160 per share. Um, if I held all the way to 200, then, you know, that's like $45,000. Um, but even today's price, right? So that's definitely one of my biggest mistakes and I will admit that as much as a home run call that I made on the channel, I didn't even capitalize on that fully myself because at the end of the day, I guess you could say I put too much emphasis into the technical aspect of things and maybe there was a, a hint of doubt um, not not total confidence that this thing can quadruple in a short period of time but sometimes these things happen and it was a good gain nonetheless but um that's something 
I might always think about, but you're gonna get a lot of these in the stock market. By the way, guys, if you are interested in getting some free stocks and some free money essentially, you know, to make up for some of your mistakes, make sure you check out the first link in the description down below. I have an exclusive referral link for Webull. This is a really great trading app as well as the technical analysis tool for you guys. Super convenient, super useful. Make sure you check it out today. Number two on this list is going to be kind of similar. It's a well-known name, obviously, and it's Tesla, okay? So a long time ago, um, well, not that long, but maybe around two years ago, I owned several shares of Tesla at a split adjusted basis around 40 or $50 per share. Again, very similar thing. I guess this is a recurring concept. And, you know, even someone like myself who I like to think that I'm knowledgeable and uh, I'm super big about, you know, investing responsibly. Naturally, I am more of a conservative investor than some other people out there. A lot of growth investors for sure. Um, I like to play it safe. So, again, this is a scenario where Tesla, I'll just speak on the numbers of the time. Uh, so this was before Tesla sp split. The stock was around low 200s I bought. And everyone on Wall Street hated Tesla. You know, maybe the one or two people like Kathy Wood, uh, Ron Barron, I think his name is, also is a really big Tesla investor. Um, of course, Jeremy from Financial Education on YouTube, super big as well. And, uh, you know, again, most people were shorting the heck out of this stock and it already dropped like 50% or more because of various reasons, Elon Musk and his eccentricities. So at that time, I thought, you know, Tesla is trending towards profitability. They are getting um, a lot of issues out of the way, um, just some short term pains as far as manufacturing and delivering. But um, I definitely could see the future. So I bought some shares at that time. I didn't have nearly as much capital as I do now. And I sold at around 40, 50 percent gain in the 300s. Obviously, we know what happened since then. Not only did this stock go from 300 pre-split to um, split adjusted, now it must be, I don't know, like 4,000 or something like that if you do the math, um, or 3,000 something. So it obviously could have been a 10x gain or something like that. Um, and when you do the math, that also works out to about $10,000 lost in opportunity. It's it kind of goes back to what sort of investor are you? What are your goals? What is your risk tolerance? You know, at the end of the day, let's be honest, I wouldn't have held through a 10x gain, most likely. I would have sold out at some point too. So you, you can't always say, oh, I bought this stock at this price. If only I held for the whole time and I didn't sell a single share. You know, at the end of the day, it's, it is hard to do that. And you got to cut yourself some slack. Some people are swing traders. Some people will sell whenever they have an X amount of gain, 10%, 20%, 30%, 50%, maybe at 100%, and then they're going to look for the next opportunity. But as you can see, right, sometimes you pick a quality stock and um, you, you, you just have to stick with it because sometimes that's going to be where you get the most gains. For sure, there are tons of examples you know, in the history of the stock market where you find a really good growth stock for the next five, 10 years, and you really multiply your money, even the likes of a Facebook, an Apple, right? Amazon can't tell you how many thousand percent that thing is up over the past decade or two. So that's definitely a big lesson that I think a lot of people need to learn, including myself. There are a whole host of other stocks that I've done this with <laughs> um, and you can, uh, I'll put it on the screen there, but you know, Square, for example, I bought at 18 in 2017. Shopify, I bought at around 70, $80 in the beginning. Uh, I would say the most um, successful I've been uh, when it comes to these uh, really long-term um, and multi-bagger gains is with SE, of course. Um, so I did um, sell SE originally 
I bought at 40 and I sold some along the way and then rebought. But um, ultimately, I did capture most of those gains. Unfortunately, I did have to pay short term capital gains as a result when I could have just held. But, uh, you know, but I'm still holding a huge position in SE and I do plan on holding it really, really long term. Now, the third mistake that I've made, and this is with a couple of different stocks, gambling on short-term options. And yes, I tell people to invest responsibly and to not mess with short-term options, but I will again be honest. The reason why I suggest that is because I've personally taken some big fat losses on short-term options and I see tons of people doing it all the time as well. And the reasons are again a multitude, not doing your research, picking expirations and, and strike prices that make no sense, like you expect the stock to go up 30% tomorrow, <laughs> um, putting too much money like into a single position. So for example, I bought some Amazon calls before $10,000 a contract because I'm an idiot, right? So not only was that insanely stressful, but I think ultimately I did lose around a thousand or two thousand dollars. And ironically, the very next day after I panic sold, it doubled. So I could have actually made around ten thousand dollars and instead I lost money. <laughs> Sad reality of a lot of these situations. And that's what screws people over trading or investing in general in the stock market and, and thinking everything is a scam when at the end of the day that was too much money for me to risk that was way too short term to to really honestly predict unless you are some genius day trader but at the end of the day even if you are a genius anything could happen right we're seeing tons of you know things being thrown at the market all the time bad news and maybe you charted it out, you looked at the indicators, RSI, blah, 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 everything looks perfect. Something could always go wrong and you cannot recover from a short-term option, especially a single leg contract, right? If you have you know, a call option and then you also um, sh have a short position to you know, bounce some of it out, then it's fine. You, you can't lose all of that money, but to to go super heavy into a single sided option trade is just asking for trouble a lot of the time, especially when it's a big part of your account that you can't afford to lose all of it. And it's taken me a couple of times to learn this, um, this lesson, to be honest. Um, another one, Another example is going to be Tesla calls, right? So Tesla calls and puts actually. Now, I know that Tesla calls and put options, they move like crazy, okay? Because Tesla itself is very volatile. It has a very high beta, meaning, you know, if the market goes up 1%, on average, Tesla is going to go up 2, 3, 4, 5% sometimes. So I try to play that and... Um, you know, one thing leads to another, guys. You know, some bad decision you make, the second it turns south, you're, you're you know, crapping your pants to, your, to, you know, put it nicely. And you make a bad decision, again, to try to balance that out. You know, let's say you buy some call options and your position starts going down, you freak out, and you're like, oh my God, I uh, should not have done that. I'm gonna buy put options now to, to, to balance it out because I lost money here. Well, guess what? After you sell your call options, sometimes your put options are gonna start to drop too because then the stock rebounds and you double screwed yourself. And this is the case with myself too. Again, this has cost me, I don't know, the Tesla trade, probably again, one or $2,000. Um, so when you put all of those together, uh, I kind of try to frame it in three uh, examples or four examples, but essentially, let's say 30,000 from food to 10,000 from my Tesla shares that I could have made, right? So that's 40,000. 
and then you know some of those options here and there you put it all together forty five fifty thousand dollars could have either been made or you know at least part of it preserved but unfortunately mistakes happen um missed opportunities occur but on the flip side at the end of the day guys you also have to keep in mind that you're never going to trade everything perfectly it's never going to be realistic and sometimes that is not going to be the right decision it's all about improving and making that next big move right there's always going to be opportunities in the stock market whether it's 2021 2022 2023 etc the market's not going anywhere so if you like this video make sure to give it a like guys and again comment down below your thoughts and any mistakes that you have personally made and until next time my friends stay well and invest responsibly